everybody and welcome to another conversation that will end up as a podcast on Circle Up and Get Real. I'm working on getting the YouTube channel to be um, more effective, so um, watch for that. You can watch this live there or you can watch this, actually you can watch this um, later. It won't be live on YouTube, it's just live on Facebook. I'm working on getting some of those details worked out in the future. Um, but Today, I just wanted to talk about what we really want, if we know what we really want, and how that will affect what we receive or how we live our lives. And I'll just share some insights I've had. And as usual, I don't script this. It's just kind of a, a download about what I'm thinking about at the moment. And always, you are welcome to share your ideas, comments, anything that you would like me to address if you're watching this live feel free to put any of your comments in the chat and I'll watch for that so I want to talk today about knowing what we want <clears throat> knowing what we want and change two topics that I think will come up in the course of this conversation so with that let's do the countdown and we'll we'll take off three two one Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Circle Up and Get Real, where we talk about things that matter with people who matter. And I just wanted to do some reflecting this week on some of the conversations I've been part of and I've been wondering and pondering about, I've been observing. And one of the topics is change. And uh, so I'll address that in a second. And then another is knowing what we want in our human lives. And it's so fascinating to me how good we've become at knowing what we don't want and being very vocal about that. So as I observe, I go to coffee shops or I go to the grocery store or wherever I can be around people, I like to just observe and listen in to some of the conversations and just notice what it is that is captivating people these days. And as I do that, I, I observe, then I wonder, and then I ponder. And what I do when I, when I do this process, I take notes, and then I think about it later. Um, part of the challenge I have in my life is I am a thinker, and so I think a lot, and I observe a lot, and I wonder and I ponder a lot. Because as a speaker, author, facilitator, who works with organizations to help with their leadership, communication, and culture, I think it's important that I have an understanding of what people are talking about, what kinds of things are concerning people, where their attention is being placed. And I'm really noticing that a lot of people seem to be pretty clear on what they don't want. And so a lot of um, online conversations, a lot of you, I watch a lot of YouTube and a lot of YouTube podcasts are really focused on what people don't want. And what's fascinating about that to me, as I've been studying the law of attraction and some of the universal laws, it shouldn't be a surprise that we keep getting more of what we don't want when all we're focusing on is what we don't want. And so I'm watching people post things on social media about how this is dumb, this is wrong, this is bad, I can't believe they do this or they are thinking that. And then it, that would be what would keep showing up for them because it's just a law. The law of attraction says you get more of what you think about all the time. And if you're thinking about what's wrong and bad and what you don't want, is it any surprise that that's what you keep getting? Uh, in one of my favorite books, actually one of my favorite authors is Richard Bach. He wrote uh, Jonathan Livingston Seagull in the 70s, and I studied that. One of the first books I actually got a chance to dig in and study in high school in a class called Novels, and that really opened my mind to a lot of things. And Richard Bach wrote another book called Illusions, and that was kind of an observation of some of the wisdom that he was putting in that book. And I, I'll never forget one of the little pieces of wisdom that he wrote there was, argue for your limitations, and sure enough, that's what will show up. So I wonder why it is that we keep arguing for our limitations, and that to me would be a yeah, but. Well, yeah, but you don't know what I have to deal with. Yeah, but you don't understand me. The buts in that, the yeah, buts, are what 
is the sure indication that it's something you don't want. And so unless we're willing to start noticing those things, I don't see a way out for people because they're so steeped in that hypnotic rhythm of what they don't want. And so if that's the way it is, I don't want to go there personally. I don't want to do that. So knowing what I don't want is to be in hypnotic rhythm. Another book we're studying right now in my Wednesday group is Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill, written right after Think and Grow Rich was published. And in that book, he talks about drifting, which is allowing your mind to drift and not being in charge of your thinking and in charge of what you truly do desire. And so I want to start noticing how people are talking about what they do want, what they do hope to experience, and what they are committed to achieving, experiencing, receiving, whatever it might be for you. And in that space then, wouldn't it be fun to start noticing that what we do want is what starts showing up for us? I believe that's a lot more fun to do in a group. That's just me, but I, I love being in groups. And not big groups, but small, small enough groups that everybody talks and everybody gets to know each other, but big enough so you have a diversity of thought and more people can share their ideas. That is, man, and I get to design my days. So we do that on Mondays and on Wednesdays and I have a Saturday group and I, I get a chance to be in these conversations quite a bit. And back, man, I'm going to try to remember when I started doing these groups, 2008 eight maybe 2009 uh, I started really digging into Think and Grow Rich and started developing study groups mastermind groups and in these groups I think if I count back now probably a thousand people have been in a group with me over the years where we've studied these principles and we've broken them apart I don't want to say torn them apart but we've broken them apart and said so what do you believe about this how does this hit you and as you can actually talk about things like principles of success from the book Think and Grow Rich, it becomes a lot easier to say, huh, I hadn't thought about that. Or thank you for sharing your perspective. That really helps me see things differently. Or I'm so glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> a lot of times that's what happens in those kinds of conversations because we're so afraid to say how we see things because it doesn't feel like there are any other people talking about what they do want because so many people are talking about what they don't want. And that has changed a lot for me, changed a lot of things for me. So that leads me into the second part of what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, and I'll come back to the laws in a second, but it change, change. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I have seen so many memes lately, uh, including one that is kind of a cartoon meme. And it, it says, there's a person standing up in front of the room and it says, who wants change? And all these people raise their hands. And then the second panel says, who wants to change? And nobody raises their hands. And so I find that really interesting that a lot of us want change. We, we know what we don't want and we want it to be different than what it is. But when it comes to taking responsibility for that or doing something ourselves for that, we just want the outcome. We don't want to do the work it's going to take to get there. And so if we can just at least shine a light on that, and say, so how's that been working? And, and not in a snarky tone, but so how's it been working? What you've been doing, how's it been working to get what you say you want? And if it's not working, that's where I love these groups. And these groups that you can build trust and you can get to know each other. And in those groups then you can say, um, thank you for sharing that, thank you for pointing that out. I don't like to hear it, but I think you're right. And I'm, I, I'm gonna come back next week and I'm gonna show you or tell you what I witnessed or what I saw. And it's not, in my eyes, it's not an accountability group per se, because there's no um, role being taken or attendance or you know keeping track of what everybody said they were going to do so that we can make sure they do it. It's not like that. It's accountability with each other in a different energy. Um, the downward push force energy does work for some things. I'm not, I'm not dissing that at all. That's not the groups I'm part of. These are the ones that are inviting people to take on their lives, to take action toward what they do want. 
and not in a uh, fear-based way, but in more of a love-based way. And so I know, call that squishy. I don't care anymore. I don't care because it is what it is for me. I am who I am. You know, I've got my shirt on today that says, believe in you. And the, the sleeve says, you are enough. Because I really believe that is the sentiment that I'd like to hear <laughs> for me. And the best way I can hear it for me or feel it for me is to just go first. And wear the shirts that say, believe in you, Jody. You are enough. Jody, because if I'm waiting for somebody else to recognize me or somebody else to give me permission or, um, you know, give me a pat on the back, I'll be waiting forever. And, and what the interesting part about that is once I give up my need for being seen like that or having somebody else give me permission, it shows up because the law of attraction is there waiting. It's there waiting to say, what is it that you truly desire? Do you desire people to see you and appreciate you and value you? Then go first and give that and you will see that you have it in abundance. And it seems counterintuitive, yet when we're in these groups working on these things, that's what is so fun about it because all of us can admit when we have fallen away from you know that that thinking because we nobody can stay there forever we can admit when we fall off and have somebody else pull us up and and work on it together not because we have to but because we're choosing to so one of the books we've read over the years there have been so many i had one wednesday group for years and we read so many books and we studied them and one of them in that group is this one it's called working with the law by raymond hollywell and if you're listening to the audio here, you won't see that I held up the book, but um, there's a lot of good stuff in this book. This is about the laws uh, of the universe. Uh, I'll just do the rundown for what they are because they're in the, the uh, table of contents. So the law of thinking, the law of supply, the law of attraction, law of receiving, law of increase, law of compensation, law of non-resistance, law of forgiveness, law of sacrifice, law of obedience, and law of success. And if you look at these as laws, it just is what it is. We can fight the laws all we want. You know, I fought the law and the law won. Huh. <laughs> that might be what happens when we find ourselves fighting against things. What if we could go with them? What if we could work with the law? It says here, right in the beginning, in the preface, the wise man changes his mind, the fool never. So going back to change, right? That's the thing that many of us resist. We resist change. We want things to stay the, the way they were. We want to go back to the good old days. We want things to be the way they used to be. We're fighting a losing battle because everything ab about nature is about change. So it says here, there can be no progress without change, no growth without renewal. There must be a constant stream of new thought, better thought, and truer thought to ensure progression in life. As soon as you perceive the better, let go of the old and grasp the new. To continue to hold on to the old and inferior when the new and superior is at hand is to retard growth. And to this one cause may be traced many of the ills of man. So it's kind of hard to argue with the laws of the universe. And as I remember this and get back into that space of working with the law, that's where I see a lot of opportunity, especially since so many of us are stuck in what we don't want. Um, and so just they, they recommend here, have good and sound reasons for all the views you hold. Have good and sound reasons for all the views you hold. As you try to find these, many of your old time views will fall to pieces. So you don't even have to try to undo the stuff. Once you recognize something new, the old will fall away, according to this book. That makes it a whole lot easier. Your mind, once expanded by a new thought, cannot regain its original dimensions. So maybe that's why people are afraid to learn new things, because they don't want to let go of the old things. And so that's the struggle many people might have. I want it to be the way it used to be. I want to go back to the way things were when they were better. Okay. And in that struggle, you, you're, you'll find that you've got this um, 
this old thought that's taking up all the space in your mind and it's not allowing for new things. So I'll just share the last part here. No, no, now this is the words of Raymond Hollywell, not me, but he says, no normal person wants to decrease in power and ability. Therefore, strive to cultivate your intelligence and to express better, bigger, and superior thought on all matters about which you may think. There is so much good in the world that it can outbalance the evil. Therefore, you can go on thinking more constructive and good thoughts every day about yourself, your fellow man, life, and all natural things to the constant enrichment of your mind and the improvement of your whole being. You can do that. You have the ability. And I believe if anybody's listening to this, I don't even know if people listen to my work here. I don't know. I have five years, five seasons of a podcast. I really don't know. I mean, I have numbers I can look at, but I don't know. I don't know if this is making a difference at all, but it's making a difference for me because it's showing me that I can do something over time and that if I'm committed to doing something, I am the beneficiary. So whether or not there's anybody else out there, thank you to the one viewer who's watching. Oh, now zero <laughs> went away. <laughs> it's so funny. It's just so funny. Um, that's one thing when I crack that code, when I can figure out how to um, engage other people in the conversations I want to have, I feel like there, there will be, um, at least for me, it'll be fun. It's more fun for me to talk with people than to talk at them. Yet this allows me to get these thoughts out of my mind and get them at least out into the world. So whether or not anybody is listening, if any anybody you know chooses to take action on this, I don't know, but I will. And so I'm declaring right here that I am willing to put more good into my life than bad. So I pledge to you that I will always look for the good. I will always do my best to concentrate on what I do want and not what I don't want. And if you ever find that I've fallen into a don't want cycle, I invite you to call me out and call me out with love, which then would be a call in. So call me in and let's, let's help each other. Let's support each other in looking for what we do want. I know it's there. I know it's there. I see it when I'm looking for it. So this, these are the things that when I'm in impartial observation mode, I might notice things that I don't necessarily want, but it's part of what is happening in the world. And so if I can do my best to be objective about what people are concerned, what people's concerns are, or what they have conversations about. And if I can remain neutral about that, that's how I wonder and ponder. And then I wonder and ponder when I hear a lot of negative, this is bad, this is wrong, whatever it might be. I do my best to try to understand where they're coming from. And what I'm learning in that space for me, in that practice for me, is I can send silent blessings. I can send you know, I can love from a distance. It's hard to hate people close up. And so when I allow myself to wonder what must be going on when they are in a negative space and then just send them a silent blessing, it helps me not pick up that negative energy, just observe it, send positive energy that way. Um, it, it works for me and it's helping me stay in the space of what I do want. So if you're interested in any of these conversations in more of this, I have Think and Grow Rich study groups coming up in the fall where we study the principles of that book in an eight week um, period of time, an hour a week for eight weeks and uh, join the more than a thousand, a thousand people that have done that. We'll do them in person in Fargo and then we'll do them online virtually. I will have a new class when I get enough interest. That's kind of how we've been going with it. I've got them scheduled, but I'm not the best at marketing. And that's one thing that I'm working on. I also have my Real Me Intensive course, which is a deep dive into me, um, you, the person who would participate. And that's a six week course, two hours a week for six weeks. And each of those will give you a much better idea about how you have the ability to alter what comes your way 
and the way you see things in the world. I promise you that each of those two studies, Think and Grow Rich and Real Me Intensive, will you know will help you in a lot of ways. And um, I'd love to share more information about either of those. We also have the uh, Enlightened Leadership Lab on Mondays at three o'clock Central. So there's no real reason not to get involved in something this fall so that you can start 2025 with a mm, shined up, maybe, uh, mindset. <laughs> it's not that you're doing anything wrong or bad, but you could shine it up. You could shine some light on your mindset and have a opportunity to take a look at things in a little bit new light starting this fall and into 2025. So I'd love to tell you more. I'll put in the show notes where you can get more information. And um, as always, just go get real with yourself, which will invite others to get real too. And then we can have conversations that matter with people who matter, which is everybody. But we can have conversations toward what we do want instead of only always about what's wrong and bad. So, you know, if you want to take that challenge, I'd love to hear more. Look me up. You can. I'm easy to find, and I'd love to have a conversation. Take care, everybody. Bye.